It is November the 13th, 2021, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hello and welcome back. I'm Chris. There is Imar, Adrian, and Jeremiah. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for making some noise. Thanks for not letting Sorry, me. Sorry, I was too busy <laughs> waving and because you know, for the video and all, right? Too busy waving and forgot to actually say anything. Are we a podcast team now? Is yes, we are. I, I, I oh, have okay. to speak. Speaking of video, um, uh, quick, quick, good news on the video side. We have now finally have a proper channel name. You know, YouTube uh, initially gives you only a number or something weird in your address, and uh, you need a certain time on the channel and a certain amount of subscribers we have gone there now we, we made it we made it we finally made it we are um let me show you here's our channel we are at youtube.com slash the future of photography there it's you go. a big time <laughs> very good yeah so we've finally grown up and i still can't press the right mm -hmm. buttons okay <laughs> this is kind of a running gag now. <laughs> it is now isn't it <laughs> so um thumbtack on that button <laughs> yeah. So, um, num, num, num. I Title. today's topic. Yeah, I th I think to kick off this episode, I would like to ask all of you, what is one of the biggest photography innovations that you remember in your lifetime? Uh, Jeremiah, I'll start with you. I'll put you on the spot here. No, it's, uh, you know, I think, and, and can I use present day innovations Absolutely. all the way back? Absolutely. I think LIDAR is the most uh, amazing innovation in photography uh, because it, it expands much, much more um, than just, you know, understanding depth uh, and, and reading information. Mm -hmm. It's all either the use for rockets, cars, factories, robots. Um, and we're only beginning this. Yeah. Uh, and, and I see this, the, the coupling of artificial intelligence, the ability of a lens to read all manner of, of information from a subject that one could recreate the reality um, or completely transform the reality or have new uses for the reality. I, I think that is a unbelievable, um, uh, uh, an unbelievable step forward in how we capture and understand images. Yeah, it adds new capabilities for sure. Um, Adrian, how about you? Oh, uh, this is this is a tough one to choose just one, right? And when we when we publish a podcast called "The Future of Photography," to choose I mean, just one I'm, thing. I'm I'm limiting it to in your lifetime. So okay, mm. all right. I'm going to tell you. So so my one is is not a technology as such. It's more a usage of a technology. It's it's the, it's the innovation in the image that that's made. Um, I'm going to go with bullet time from mm, okay. the original Matrix movie in 1999, so a little over 20 years ago now. Um, that, for me, was the first time I... You know, I mean, I'd always, you, you always see special effects, and special effects yeah. always increase and improve like, yeah. over time, you know. Um, uh, but bullet time was was an awesome thing. It was like, wow, that's like incredible. never seen anything like that before. Very, How on earth did they do that? A very creative use of the then available technology, com 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 combining lots of cameras and computers and stuff. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, I remember. Want, I want to say that it was it was used initially in commercials. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, I remember seeing it and be blown away before the Matrix. Yeah, uh, okay. Just a couple, just a couple of times. Um, I remember uh, uh, Rolling Stones video that had uh, like one second of it in there on a pool. Someone jumped in, and the camera just shifted slightly around that, and um, that oh, okay. blew me away. And I wondered how it's yeah. done. So. Uh, bullet time. Okay, Imar, do you have uh, something that comes to mind? Okay, two things. So personally, uh, in my own biggest kind of innovation for me was the phone thing. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, like drones have to be a game changer. Like for they, they're just 
take it to a new level. I'm I'm getting sucked into the idea now. I keep seeing lovely drone shots all the time. Thinking, oh, I can <laughs> never get that high if I don't get a drone, you know. You need or a very drone. long tripod, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of drone. Yeah. <laughs> Ayahuasca. <laughs> so, oh, so. But yeah, I think drones have to be. I mean, and as, you know, as they get better and better and better, right. and what they can do and they they just they're think, becoming like what the the next generation of drones yeah. where where you combine really efficient lidar mapping yeah. uh visual mm. ai so that you can literally launch a i'm waiting for this launch a, a drone into a dense forest and have it navigate uh, around trees objects leaves yeah. that's already there Skydio does it. To a certain it. extent. Yeah, yes, I know, but, but yes, but not in the... Um, not but does it look has, like that, Willis? Yeah, yeah. Skydio is pretty amazing. You know what I mean? Look at me and then like off it does and it tracks you. But there's lags and it doesn't, it doesn't adjust quite as fast as what I'm talking about. I'm really talking about, a, a, I guess, faster chips. Right. faster processors, faster AI, right. so that you can really go into a... Vi we will see things that we've never seen before if once that all comes together. Yeah. I, I predict that's probably a year, maybe two years away at most. That sounds likely. So so for me personally, and I, I want to go way more fundamental than than what, what we've heard here, is, is digital photography. The switch from analog to digital is kind <clears> of, <throat> for me, the huge big thing that changed everything. But then if you look at the history of photography and the history of innovation in photography, there were, were multiple points where that could have been said, like this was game changing and um mm. i've I've, sure. i've i've done a little write up here of like the history of photography innovation and and going back and i want i want to go a kind of a roundabout way and come back to drones because that's interesting um so camera obscura what in 1021 the camera obscura was first conceived and it took what, 800 a thousand years oh. ago and it took 800 years for the first photograph to be made so that was kind of a long <laughs> way to get to what we May called I, photography. Uh, let, let, let me just interject something about humanity here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just say, for the purpose of argument, that uh, you know our species is forty, fifty thousand years old, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how long did it take us to invent the wheel? Oh, I know. That's <laughs> that's that's the thing. I, I want I want to get to to somewhere with this. So we have we had eight hundred years for the first photograph. The first commercial camera took another sixty two years. Um, Another game changer was instant photography. That took about 60 years from that point. Um, digital photography took 40 years from the first instant photography. And then the camera phone, what Imar just mentioned, took about 10 years from the start of digital photography. So in innovation is speeding up. And, yeah, uh, everything's speeding up. Everything, everything is speeding up. That's exactly what you just said, Jeremiah. It, it just took us so long to invent the wheel. <laughs> but then the innovation cycle gets shorter and shorter. And we get into... <laughs> Um, into the pace is, is, is increasing. I, I would also like to know, you know, with the generation after generation, 2,000 years of like hauling stones or <laughs> crops or whatever, <laughs> right. who invented, like, I have an idea. No, this is, you not, have, you not, have, have you not seen 2001? You know that like big long yeah, sequence sure. at the beginning yeah. of 2001 where yes. the chimpanzees <laughs> are playing with stones and then there's the, sure. the monolith yeah. there and, and, and it stares at them, which it's is quite aliens. tricky to do without <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and, then, um, and then they all start trying to kill each other with bones. That's, that's like, oh, yeah. great. So aliens came and invented killing, right? <laughs> no, I but think I... one of the problems, uh, uh, just to, to interrupt further, <laughs> is the innovation that you speak of, Chris, is, is speeding up. Yes. But the evolution of human intelligence and self-preservation seems to be slowing down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely with you. So, so um, coming f or, or continuing with that idea of uh, in increasing pace of innovation um i think we're looking at uh, in in the photography industry that we have we're looking at two companies mainly who who push photography forward um and in my eye that's apple and dji it's not the incumbents it's not the canons the nikons the sony's it's apple and dji that 
um, that make photography move forward. And uh, yeah, I agree. Oh, and I can hear the listeners tearing their hair out right mm-hmm. now. Where, mm-hmm. where's, where, what about what about Samsung? What about mm-hmm. Sony? What well, about there are there are Rico Rico with their theta That's there, different than there are design. Definitely, there, there are definitely innovations that do not come from Apple. I'm absolutely with that. But the combination of things. I mean, we're we're looking at the first iPhone in 2007 that had two megapixels. And that didn't really increase that that quickly. We're looking at three megapixels in 2009 and five megapixels in 2010. And it was just incremental changes. And then all of a sudden in 2016, they went uh, computational photography. They introduced portrait mode, mm. which um, is, is a, direct, big. a direct attack on the big sensors because now we can do bokeh. Um, portrait lighting <laughs> based on the depth information, c- collecting depth information, at all is has changed a lot of things that's that yeah that that's a big thing actually collecting depth information isn't it yeah it goes back right. to what yeah I, I know the early ones weren't based on lidar but they were based on parallax essentially weren't they but the yeah the that depth control uh the, the stuff yeah recording yeah. a depth map and that that, that yeah. is a big and thing. then and then you get the chance to you get the the ability to control the depth after the fact so you take a photo and you can change the the, the well, not just the focus point, but the aperture, the virtual aperture, um, twenty nineteen night mode, deep fusion, and uh, they started with um, what I think now the official term is semantic rendering, which means the the camera knows what is what in the picture, it knows sky from from a meadow, and yeah. and can treat these things separately. It segment segments the image smartly sort of smartly recognizes subjects, these kind yeah. of things. Yeah, uh, to, to that point, uh, you know, you could capture, a, again, uh, a forest. Uh, the camera recognizes that there are trees. Right. But in the interpolation of that, you can go, you know, uh, I would rather have maple trees than birch trees substitute. <laughs> Ooh, wow. That will, that will come at one point. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then, Jeremiah, back, back to your innovation, 2020, they introduced LiDAR. With the iPhone 12 Pro, yeah. um, they added HDR, Dolby Vision, 4K, cinematic mode now. So we are we are seeing so, an interesting pace of innovation. Basically, since 2016, they have included something new based on what they do, what they can do with their software and the hardware. Basically, every year, some major innovation. So that that is that is apple and um i have the feeling that they are they're kind of nearing the end of what they can squeeze out of the phones with computational photography um they they have already started making the sensors bigger and making the lenses bigger because physics physics isn't dead right there's <laughs> still it's still there <laughs> and if you if you now with an iphone 13 pro if you do go go to portrait mode they will definitely well, by default switch to the uh, telephoto camera because that will by default give you a better bokeh that doesn't look as artificial. So, they, but again, we're we're still looking at six, seven, eight years of very interesting innovation there. But now let's look over to DJI because they are they are on a different planet. I think it's really interesting because <laughs> they they started in 2012. They had their first drone out, just a drone, a flying thing. And that was innovation in itself because, um, and they were certainly not the first ones. Relative. Well, they were not the first ones who did it, but the first one didn't even have a camera. It was just a drone and it uses um, smartphone technology in terms of the gyros, the, uh, so, so it can keep itself, uh, well, it, it can stop sure. falling out of the sky. And uh, the only first camera drone, but that happened in the same year, um, and that was for a Sony Next camera. So they built a gimbal, which is another innovation. Again, I don't necessarily know if they invented that gimbal, but they productized it. They brought it to the market, so it made it affordable and made it um, into a mass market thing. And um, Maybe one of them was a sailor. You always get gimbals on boats. Possible. I mean the the boat the ship gimbals are are all 
physics. They are mechanical. Yeah, it's how, you, it's how you stop your dinner from falling off the stove when you're at sea. <laughs> that is right, but they but they combine that with motors, with gyros, with um, with mm. computer technology, with smart. Which is very clever. So, I'm always very, amazed very clever, by those yeah. things. How clever they are. Um, Just a, it was an aerial photograph was like. There was whole businesses like based locally around here oh, yeah. to, to, that just did aerial photography. Have, have they, you, have you had um, people ring your doorbell, try to sell you an aerial photograph of your house? We had back. No, in, no, never had that. But yeah. when I worked in the framers, we did we did some work for several different um, kind of companies that did that kind of thing around the area. And then the in you know the GAA, the Gaelic football and the hurling is so huge here that they. They kind of invented this thing that was really <laughs> innovative at the time called Hawkeye that would like it was it was like a, a big tripod, well not a big tripod, a big monopod that just watched everything and was like a eye in the sky referee mm. because it moves so fast. Oh. Yeah. Um that, you know, the the referee couldn't always catch the the penalties on the ground or whatever. And yeah, I, um, I, I remember were, using entire it. businesses. A drone in, uh, I guess it was, I don't know, 94 around there. Uh, mm -hmm. No no camera. Uh, it was a helicopter drone. Um, and uh, it was radio controlled fly flying with real helicopter pilots. It was about four feet, maybe four or five feet uh, long. Uh, and it was capable of carrying a, you know, a big Panasonic camera. And we, we were shooting in... Uh, uh, in these very narrow uh, canyons in Page, Arizona, you've seen these things, you know, with the light coming mm. down. Very, very beautiful yeah. lines. But we mm. were moving through that and narrow river canyons, the same following, uh, you know, rafts and, and whatnot as the story went. <laughs> we, we, we crashed one into the sidewall and into the drink. But because there... The, the operator had to, fundamentally, they were fly by feel and vision. Uh, so the big innovation on drones is really uh, area networks mm -hmm. because the network um, innovation allowed the operator to basically see what they were doing and, and fly more rather than by, by, by visual, right. rather than by mechanics or, or by mathematics. So, I so think we, have to, we have to address that innovation as it, it is. It is something that helped the whole thing come together. That's always the interesting thing. The, good, the big innovation often happens when multiple previously existing things come together yeah. or are being put together. And we're, we're, we're looking at, at, at like two to three different innovations in a year coming from DJI. I mean, they, they quickly sw switched over to the, to the Phantom, which is the, the GoPro carrying drone. And then they, um, they added FPV, first person view. On, onto it, yeah. so that was exactly what you're talking about. The pilot can finally see where this thing is going without having mm. to look at it in the sky, but they can actually see what the drone sees, which uh, changed mm. everything. And then they started their own camera. So GoPro was out within a short time, and um, and uh, they they added the the three axis gimbal, so the camera is like rock solid, like like it's 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 nailed to the sky. Um, they and then they and then they did the next step and uh, I guess Jeremiah, you have probably often used this in in uh, filmmaking and that's the Ronin, which is them, which is their gimbal that they made for the cameras upscaled to a handheld size. So the drone is out now. Um, the Ronin is just a handheld gimbal that you that you put a proper camera on and then you can run around and it keeps everything stable. So. Um, yeah, I have the Osmo uh, Pocket. Which is, which yeah, is another innovation. Is, uh, the whole thing is yeah, miniaturized. It's miniature, mm -hmm. uh, miniature, and you, literally you keep it in your pocket, but the quality, uh, in fact, I, I did my little vlog using it. That's how I, mm. I filmed my vlog. I just mm -hmm. kind of touched me on the screen, and it, uh, no matter where I was with my hand, it would always keep me in yep. frame. Um, and the quality was surprisingly good considering, and, and this was... Um, you know, it's really meant for the web, not for the big screen. Uh, but uh, I, I could see a 4K image being, you know, 
extrapolated out of that right. for certain shots. I, um, I think that's a, that's a really important one for me in terms of innovation. Not not necessarily because of the the sensor or whatever, but just in the ergonomics of it. Um, you know, to have something like that where yeah, it, there, there was, I don't think there'd ever been anything that looked like that before and operated in that way that gave you that set of priorities in the hardware design. Um, yeah, the, the priorities had always been, it seemed to me to that point to be, we're going to, to make this camera, this video camera look as much like a, an old 35mm SLR as we possibly can, <laughs> which, which never seemed to me to make a lot of sense because mm. 35mm excuse me, 35 mil SLRs uh, you know, didn't ever seem to me to be a particularly good hardware format for video. <laughs> or film. Well, let, let me ask you guys a question. Um, have you ever kind of unpacked uh, some new fandangle gizmo um, that was built out of Asia, for example, and and it, it, it all you bought it because it had increased functionality and some dazzle, but in setting it up, you realized between the menus and the the, the kind of uh, just that you made to, a terrible mistake yes that it was <laughs> yeah. designed not by people who use it but by engineers so it did have the function but it was impossible to kind of uh, have that tactile intuitive way of capturing or use usage um i think the first red camera was very much like that um it was amazing quality when when you got it, but it wasn't uh, production friendly. It's it's changed obviously over the years, but but initially it was a computer that you could put a lens on, and so um, going through menus and all of that stuff, you had the time. It was great, but but <laughs> on a on a you know on a film, you know we adapted, but um, engineering versus uh, usage. Uh, is something that Apple has, in many ways, dominated that kind of feel, and I think DJI is is tracking right along as well. I, th I think uh, I have to say that just phones in general, I find not to have great ergonomics for photography. I mean, you do you mean and, in terms of in terms of the how you hold them and that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah that 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 kind of thing. Um, it's uh, yeah, that that's that's one of the things that you know. Last year, when I went for the the big phone last year and got the iPhone 12 Pro Max and thought, yeah, this is going to be mm. my my uh, yeah my my main point and shoot camera because that means I don't need to carry anything out. Um, yeah, I have since swapped that phone out. I don't think I've ever had a mobile phone for only one year, uh, but it mm. turned out not to be the phone for me once I started leaving <laughs> the house. Mm. Um, and now I carry my little Olympus Tough camera with me almost mm -hmm. everywhere because. Mm. That actually, I can hold it. It's a one. It's a one-handed camera. I can mm -hmm. do whatever I want with it. And mm -hmm. and look at that. So I've got you know. There's my phone in its nice little red case. Here's my nice little mm -hmm. red camera. Looks so <laughs> <laughs> like nice little pair now. <laughs> so. Um, so now you got to carry two things. <laughs> yes, but they both. Fit. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's true. But but I feel more. I I get better photographs. I think yeah. with with the dedicated camera than yeah. I do with with the phone, and I can certainly react more quickly with it. Though making well. a call on that camera is much more difficult. Do people actually make phone calls anymore? I, I, I may have received two phone calls in the in the few months I've had that new phone. Maybe a couple of months. How ago. long before somebody comes out with um, something that looks like an iPhone but is not a phone at all? That's just a camera, and just add put all the extra functionality. They've tried. Take all the phone stuff away. They have been a few that tried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but they never Remember really with worked multiple out. lenses. The one that had mm -hmm. like. Yeah. 12 or 14 oh, lights. Lights. Light. Light. Oh, yes. They tried yeah. it and it didn't really pan out. It didn't so, work. so um, I thought it was a shame. I would have bought though. that. <laughs> back, back to DJI. So the Osmo, uh, handheld little camera with a gimbal. Um, in the same year, they did actually, and I just, I just read this on the website. They actually started a venture into agriculture. So all right, they do have drones. They have drones that can carry some load. So they have mm -hmm. they have drones that you that have a tank that you can fill up with liquid and that will go oh, they... uh, and and spray very very particular areas on your fields that kind of stuff. <laughs> so if you're a farmer and you you want to have precision agriculture, you can do this with a 
with the uh, with DJI's agriculture. Are they GPS thing? guided? Because I know that things like they combine are. harvesters uh, are they are. Uh, are GPS guided, aren't they? There's oh, your Osmo. Osmo. has got his little Osmo. <laughs> I really that that's one of the few cameras that I often think I really should buy one of those. It's right? really really good. Five star mm. review from me. Oh, I, there I, we go. And it oh, comes wow. with this hard case that you can just throw in anywhere. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, it, so, it's truly a, they, they are. They are right. quite something. So, so this year, 2021, they had uh, they had a whole bunch of releases, which oh, kind of blew me away. They have this the FPV drone, like a sports first person drone. You, you might have seen the videos of those with diving yeah. through derelict buildings in the window, through the hallway, down around trees, that kind of stuff. So, so that's a, that's a, a sports discipline now. Um, of course, new Mavic uh, camera, Air 2S is out, um, their smartphone gimbal, which I'm, I'm not sure if people still use those, but they are, they are out there. And the Ronin 4D, we talked about this here, Jeremiah, the, yeah. the, the, the gimbal. I can har- hardly wait. See, that's, yeah, that's, that that's one. another Production one. Just, we should talk about that a little bit because that, it, that's the, the new one where it's, it, it's camera and gimbal and everything all built into and one steady unit. Cam so and steady cam and everything, that's a, yes. That's another one where they've completely... I think well, we talked try, about try it in, at least to in, completely innovate the mm-hmm. hardware design. Yeah. Of, we talked about it in the episode that you weren't here for. So. Ah, okay. All right. Last week. But there have okay. been Sorry some very that. interesting reviews of it online yeah. as well, um, which, which uh, kind of pointed out its advantages and shortcomings for a production camera. It's not going to be perfect over, for sure, but no. But overall, it's it's pr- pretty innovative and and. Uh, at 8K, this is um, also a, a major capture device, I think, for right. you know, for those, so those of us who are interested in it. They've also just released an action camera, which, again, is a, like a, a... Why would we need another action camera? We have GoPro. We have 10 different other makers. They, they just shrunk this thing down dramatically and made it click to other components with with magnets and that kind of stuff. So you have a modular system. So I found this kind of interesting. The area that I think is really interesting now is that they have uh, two products that tackle the educational market because they have what they call the Tello Talent Drone, which is a drone that kids can use and and program and do things with. Um and then they have RoboMaster, which is a which is a robot, a rolling robot, yeah. like on a, on a driving yeah. platform, which might even be able to carry a camera. And um, that's again completely targeted towards education. So, hmm. and what about underwater drones? Which do they already? Be, I don't I think mean, they are, already make those, but that's they probably don't, just but, a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, because I think that's going to be interesting in terms of innovation. It will also be, yeah, this is good. You can control it and see, and it'll have filters and clarify the water, and you'll be able to kind of explore. Uh, and at first, you'll know, oh yeah, it's good for thirty feet, and then it's good for a hundred feet, and it's good for a thousand feet. And so again, mm-hmm. network radio, how that works. But you know, it would be really nice to, to sink your your little drone uh, mm. to the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, have, 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 just, just about have to a, say they'll have a signature series with James Cameron, won't they, or something like have, that. <laughs> have a bunch of have a bunch of no, normal people like us dr- dr- dive their drones down the Mariana Trench. How about that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I, that is very. By the way, that's very exciting. I think if if mm. one could, you know, if if the power units could uh, prevail over long, long um, distances. So you can really launch it onto the sea and use the water and energy to kind of store power in the battery and then, mm. you know, uh, kind of drop down and, and just do a compass point and say, you know, it'll take two weeks. It should reach this compass point. Mm-hmm. And then I can go. I mean, that that could be I, I could see that happening. Um, it's not out of the realm of of what we what we could imagine, whether it's consumer based or corporate based or, you know, whether it costs, you know, a million bucks or mm-hmm. or three hundred bucks is going to be the, the big tell all. But um, but I think the technology will be available to actually start to build these things for underwater use. So I think we can agree that we live in a in a time of, of amazing innovation in photography. 
from all sides. The Apple DJI just being two examples of the companies that do a lot there and make it accessible to the masses. So uh, what does that mean for the future of photography? Hmm. Hmm. No, no. I think it's, so. It's how you use these things. Did it's anybody the see that thing, um, trailer with Mark Zuckerberg in it? Oh, the me- metaverse thing. I like. Uh, I've seen. He's been doing the rounds in this last week or so, hasn't because he? Talking to people, he's been on lots of YouTube. All of a sudden, I'm terribly uncomfortable about where it's, all of this. Is I like the Icelandic <laughs> version of it, um, which is very too. funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't. I haven't seen that one. Oh yeah, it's good. They Icelandic responded. metaverse. Pretty, Google pretty it or YouTube it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, it'll make listen. me feel better, not worse. Yes, it will make uh, you yeah. feel better. Um, yeah, the metaverse is quite something. It's a topic for another day. It I is think. probably. You know, that, it's definitely. That, that I think it might be, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, it, is, it, it has technical implications also in terms of uh, innovation, but it, I think, has way more societal implications than anything else. Absolutely. So, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It probably, and, it probably does, and aesthetic, yeah. because you know uh, there is a uh, a spectacular uh, interview that just dropped this week um, to uh, Jaron Lanier, and for mm-hmm. those of us who know him, he's I, I guess one could consider him the pioneer of of virtual reality. I mean, we're talking about the eighties. Yeah, um, he's one of the most brilliant minds uh, operating in in that world. That system currently works for Microsoft, but he's in his own little realm. He was interviewed by Kara Swisher, and you can find this on the New York Times um, uh, website under Sway. Uh, that's her podcast, Sway. Uh, her interview with mm-hmm. him is really uh, highly recommended uh, in terms of his analysis okay. of where we're at in terms of mm. virtual reality and society and um, all those kinds of innovations and talks uh, a lot about Zuckerberg and Meta. Um, I highly recommend this. It's clearly going to be um, you know, a big bun fight, isn't there, from companies trying to be the metaverse? Um, the the innovation will come from the I mean the only way that it really does didn't succeed, we did we just say we want to make this its own episode <laughs> we do we do we do uh, yeah coming, okay. coming okay. soon can I'll try, you yes, own your soon. can you own your digital assets across all different um, contexts metaverses uh, yeah. environments yeah. whether they be gaming environmental social etc. That or is the, or does the, does the concept of ownership of digital assets even even apply in that kind oh, of scenario? It does. <laughs> I'm sure at some level it does. Absolutely. So so all right. But we're dragging us kicking and screaming back to the topic then, right? I had made a list in preparation for this show that was mm-hmm. about output rather than technology, and I think do you know what? It more more or less it actually it has some good read across to to the stuff we've been talking about so far. So, because for me, what this means for the future of photography is what people can do with all of this cool stuff, right? Right. So, yeah, I had, we already mentioned bullet time, um, which, which I, uh, yeah, w- was an, an interesting application. Just one year later, still over 20 years ago in 2000, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, an amazing movie. One of my personal favorites. Just a joy mm, to watch. Just a joy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the first mm-hmm. Hollywood full feature movie uh, to be fully colored in digital in post production. Uh, and if you've ever seen some of the uh, the pre grading shots, so I mean, the, you know, those that know the movie know that it has um, quite a almost a monochromatic color palette. Everything is in sort of you know, sort of light yellows and and beige and and tan and things like that. Uh, um, and they have these mm. sweeping shots of fields of crops that are all those colors in the movie, which actually were a bright green prior to, to <laughs> right. you know, color grading because they were crops that were growing right they were green they were things growing in the ground mm-hmm. um so that yeah that that's that's one i think that that links in perhaps with the sort of timelines for digital technology that chris was mentioning and chris you mentioned photography but um you know the, the post-production stuff came through mm-hmm. as well um i have tangerine the movie sh- the first movie to be shot on an iphone Mm-hmm. 2015 that was if i look back at your time scale for the iphone uh stuff 
Chris, 2015, uh, probably just before the portrait mode stuff. But that was before really the there. computational or before the obviously computational stuff. They did computational yeah. stuff before, for sure. Yeah. Mm. So, so, but, but then, you know, good stuff. Um, I have the Mandalorian, um, you know, which is less about the cameras and more about the way you build sets and, and, yeah. and, and, and the technology around filming. Uh, 2020, mm. just last year, and we featured this on the on the podcast before. Andy Schauf, uh, clove cigarette, which is the. Do you remember the music video that was all done with point cloud animation? Yeah. That we that we featured. Um, that mm. yeah. so good. So it's amazing. just just amazing and, and, that, so that and that's leads, where lidar comes back in that's where the lidar comes back in yeah so yeah um yeah, i i don't think uh, at least i'm not aware of of how they shot it i, I, I doubt uh, that level of sophistication it was on a uh, an early apple release of a phone with lidar or something a bit more sophisticated than that i suspect but uh, mm. but all of these things are happening the, the, i tell you what i've got one for you just going back to what you said about a societal um uh, who can tell me what year, without reading the show notes, who can tell me what year YouTube launched? Or have I've you already read, read the, the show, show notes? <laughs> 90, I'm going to take a wild guess on 1996. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, no, it's a bit later than that. It's 2005. Wow. It's Do you remember like the, the, the original YouTube logo that had a 4 by 3 TV with two little aerials sticking out the top of yep. it? Yeah, that was... Uh, I remember that. Um, and uh, very skeuomorphic. Yeah, I think I do. Very skeuomorphic. In the days before YouTube mm. was a Google product, of course, it started independent, as many, uh, you know, as many of these things do. But I think for me, that's mm. you know, that fundamentally changed a huge amount of stuff to do with filmmaking and yep. social media and photography. You know, um, uh, and there's there's so so much creativity there whether it's your cup of tea or not i mean the, the spectrum of stuff you can get there and of course we now have things like uh yeah uh, tiktok we had vine previously uh you know now uh oh. youtube is doing shorts uh, oh yeah what happened to that to to vine, to vine? uh i forget didn't it get yeah. it's been by replaced somebody? by tiktok pretty much yeah oh. did it did it just die then i, I don't think know it oh, just got it? closed yeah. i i, I I don't know. It was a mistake. Anyway. <laughs> and for those of us, but, you know, make it uh, at the high end, you know, Vimeo is out there as well, isn't it? So, so for me that, you know, that sort of thing is because it gives people a platform. It gives people a method of sharing their creativity. Mm. Yeah. And of course we're talking about moving images here primarily. Yeah, we could go through the history of sharing still images, you know, with Flickr and others. Um, but the, I, I think YouTube was definitely something that, you yeah, know, was fundamentally changed and uh, i'm i'm wondering what what's going to be the youtube for the metaverse or what's going to be the youtube for for vr does is it youtube Mm. because they do already do you know 360 Mm. type stuff don't they? yeah they they kind of shoehorned it in yeah Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah but it it doesn't feel particularly native though although that's perhaps because i don't have the hardware to view it properly i mean chris you've got an oculus it still is not yeah it's still not super native uh, even yeah, in, or, in order to really experience that, you you, you don't you can't really be uh, kind of com- basically controlled by your hardware. It has to feel natural, like it's got it's got to be a simple or, pair of glasses you put on, and it, then everything yeah. is exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Uh-huh. There you go. But I uh, fell down a little YouTube rabbit hole lately. Of um, you know, this whole channel is just of driving through towns, and like it's you're in the car and you're driving and you're just driving through the streets. And like mm. I found my own town, and I was like, "Wow!" And then I found <laughs> other towns. Oh, I, I haven't <laughs> I done that. Down a little is, rabbit that hole. is that a good rabbit That's hole? That's so good about YouTube. Is it? Yeah, it was fun. You know, it's like as if I was like, "Wow!" I'm in the car. I'm driving through. You know. <laughs> Longford or somewhere. Uh, I also <laughs> uh, want to b- give a big <laughs> shout out in terms of you know innovation uh, in our lifetime to Photoshop One. Uh, Photoshop Ooh, yeah. was Good a point. fundamental um, game changer in terms yeah. of moving Photoshop, yeah. us out of the dark room and into breathable air and less toxic uh, chemistry. At least um, you know for those of us who embraced it and its innovative. Um, trajectory and and we should probably include on the software side adobe because they have made significant moves in the last 20 25 years from substance which is a way to kind of create your own 
textures, which can be applied to a LIDAR uh, mapping, it's a texture mapping, uh, just creating podcasts, creating audio, creating visuals, integration, after effects, editing, and of course, the big mama, uh, Photoshop, which um, now is, you know, the, the amount of tools uh, available, even if you just use 10% of it, is dazzling. So if at, if, if, if that, that much at all. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I know a lot of people who use just mm. a sliver yeah. of it. So the future of photography is interesting. I guess that's what we can agree on. There's going to be new stuff. There's going to be useless stuff, but also very... <laughs> A very big amount mm. of useful stuff. Let's move so on to place. The... Do we want to place some bets yeah, just be, just before just for fun? <laughs> do we want to place. Who do we think is going to be? Yeah. You know, who who do we think that maybe is a famous photographer today, or or maybe a famous filmmaker of whatever or, or discipline within filmmaking? Who do we think is going to be is going to invent something really new and surprising in the next five years or so with all of this emerging tech? I have a feeling it'll come from left field. Yep, it'll come from somewhere we, that you don't expect it. Yep. Yeah. So you, you like, like all great innovations. Yeah. Okay. So you don't. It expect could be it swallowed to be... up by one of these guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> but, it, it, uh, it will be yeah. bought by someone big, but it will be it will be a disruptive kind of thing coming from okay. somewhere as soon as the tools are there, even before the tools are really there. Um, yeah, and I think it'll be a kind of, as you said, Chris, a kind of system integration of existing yeah. chipsets, intelligence, hardware, software combinations that are applied together in completely new ways that we cannot predict. Yeah. So, <laughs> picks of the week. I am um, going to start with mine because it, it it's, it's, it's not really innovation, but it links in with VR and I guess from the perspective of that company it is innovation i'm talking about a new lens that was released by canon and it's a dual fisheye lens so it uses the rf mount for their r series cameras for their mirrorless ones it has two lenses on the front and it projects two circular images onto the sensor which will then be used by vr related stuff so um, we're talking 180 stereoscopic and 180 degree stereoscopic video so you can look at a scene in stereo and uh do this with your oculus or whatever apple headset as soon as that's going to be out or your metaverse thing whatever so content creation for <laughs> Um, for that world is now moving over from specialized things into the incumbents again. Kind of I, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. I I, I love that. Mm -hmm. I just the the concept of it. I I love it. Um, and just I, I would never have expected to see something like that from Canon. Yeah, it is. It was just a, a bit of a surprise, but then on the other hand, it's also kind of logical uh, because they have the the camera. Uh, ecosystem they have good sensors they have a lot of the things that you need and all you need and I, I remember a friend of mine a filmmaker who tried to do 3d video and he built a, a holder for two cameras in parallel but he never really managed to synchronize them well so it was always kind of not perfect and this pretty much takes care of that so it also has i th think it for me it also has it's the first use case i've ever seen for like these 60 megapixel cameras that people <laughs> true <have>. very <laughs> true it's like, it's like why on earth would people need 60 megapixels oh yeah because you're gonna <laughs> record two pictures at once that makes right. more sense now <laughs> so yeah that's um that's a it's a it's a, a, a notable thing i think coming from them um adrian your pick of the week well, my pick of the week doesn't have a link um, and, and we've already joked about it. So now I'm feeling a little bit sheepish. But essentially, my pick of the week mm. was, was the metaverse, because uh, whether whether it's Mark Zuckerberg or somebody else, you know, it, it, the metaverse is getting a lot of love and attention in the press this week, isn't it? Um, right. And, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, you the, there's a lot going on here there's a lot of technology um there's there's a lot of recent use of these concepts in 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 stories you know things like ready player one you know you can reach back as far as snow crash and before that neuromancer i tend to go more on the snow crash side than the neuromancer side which, which is a very dystopian look at this uh at this concept right 
Snow crash. Uh, uh, it, it, so, yeah, it is. Um, and, and you could argue, is it going to be a... Well, well, hang on. But let's think about... Let's just track that through a bit, though. I mean, there are elements of Ready Player One uh, uh, where, yes, okay, it's a sort of, you know, uh, a crazy you know, story, but, but there are elements of the way the metaverse is defined in Ready Player One as something that has brought education to people that would never be able to get it otherwise. I don't know if, if if the three of you have read Ready Player One. There's way more, as ever with the books. I haven't read it. I've watched the movie, though. Yeah, there's uh, way more in the, the books book than there are in the movie. The book is pretty, pretty interesting book. Uh, you know, yeah, to... it's got some great ideas. And yes, absolutely, you can. You, you, you don't need to squint too hard at it to see Snow Crash you know, and stuff like that. But it's it, it, these things are all great. And you build, don't you? You build and you build and you build. And was it... Was it Isaac Newton that said, "If I see further than anybody else, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants"? Was that was that Newton? I think it might have I been. Think so, yeah. Somebody smart. Somebody smart. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I I think may, maybe the, the the my pick of the week is the metaverse because maybe its time has come. But I couldn't find a link that said anything particularly substantial about it. You well, know, by the way, than... link, link to Sway's interview with Jaron uh, Lanier on Sway uh, uh, because mm. that is he said something very interesting about the purpose of the uh, of the metaverse. Like, why do you want to be there? He said because when you yeah. come out of it reality never felt as magical or as fresh (laughs) (laughs) that's so uh, it gives you a contrast about in real life and a renewed appreciation we're definitely so in which case then i changed my mind Mm. my pick of the week now is a movie uh the movie is called surrogates it was made in 2009 and it stars bruce willis and rosamund pike Um, it's a little bit of a different take on the metaverse, but everybody does stay at home (laughs) and everybody does wear goggles all the time. But what they do is they, 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 they wear them to, they wear them to uh, control their own personal robot drones that actually participate in everyday life for them. So that's the avatar story, but in a different view. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, Mm. Jeremiah, what's your pick of the week? No surprise here. It's it's a magazine. And if this one, to LiDAR it, magazine. It LiDAR magazine. Right. <laughs> For everybody. And you know, and what just... and what does it talk about? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um it's probably one of the more obscure magazines that are, that's out there. But Interesting. Uh, deep dive there and fascinating articles. I will certainly have a look. Yeah. Very cool. That because because good, I now actually. because I now Hope have a phone that has lidar. So. And you have a Tesla. And that too. That doesn't have lidar Did, though. No, <laughs> is, is, isn't yes? Isn't uh, Elon Musk an anti anti lidar kind of person? <clears throat> well, no, he's not. He says it's it's not necessary because it oh, adds okay. it adds, adds expense and complexity. That's pretty much the reasoning and it adds a, another layer of sensors where you have to t- mm-hmm. do find a way to fuse them together and find out which one is right and so on that's why that's why tesla is mostly on the on the camera side they also have they also have uh in, in european cars now still radar and they have uh ultrasonic sensors that they also use but anyway um imar <laughs> Yes, I don't have one. <laughs> but to bring it right back to the very beginning, next Saturday, I'm doing a camera obscura workshop. Um, cool. Place where I work. Yeah. There so you we're going to, um, the artist who's currently on display in the Art Center is giving this workshop. So at the end of it, we're going to have a cardboard box camera obscura. So I spent like <laughs> one day during the week, I had to go and buy 20 magnifying glasses um <laughs> for these cardboard boxes so for this is and it takes fun. us right back to the to 1021 right back the to invention the of the beginning. camera obscura yeah very very cool so, so i guess yeah. that's a nice apologies about circle here my highlight i'm sorry i didn't actually have time to even pick one this week that is perfectly fine we are gonna <laughs> have many more shows for for each of us to bring their picks of the week <laughs> there will be many more innovations and many more picks for sure that's a, I think that's a given, isn't it? And Absolutely. We like, and we like our toys, don't we? 
We are the future of photography. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so yeah, I, I might have to. This is this says I might have to go out and fly the drone again. That's just I should do this. It's dark. Maybe wait till morning. <laughs> Maybe wait till morning. Maybe on a Sunday. Anyway, we'll be back soon with or until then everyone take care and have a good one at the future of Bye. photography. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Bye.